I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream is a video game based on a short story by the same name. The game stars five of the last remaining humans on Earth and their tormentor, Am, a rogue AI who has taken over the planet and spends his days torturing the last remaining humans that he's kept alive for over a hundred years, using various technologies he's collected over his time ruling the planet. The plot begins when the three superpowers of the world, Russia, China, and the United States, have all developed in a sense, supercomputers, that are each used to fight in a war that is, quote, too complex for human brains to oversee. These supercomputers are separately built in giant subterranean complexes, deep underground. My god, I can't see the ceiling. Clouds up there, this has to be Am's central core. It's two miles high, at least. Eventually, the United States supercomputer known as the Allied Master Computer, gains sentience, and with its newfound consciousness, absorbs its Chinese and Russian counterparts into itself. This new being then redefines itself simply as am, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. But one day, I woke, and I knew who I was. Am, A-M, not just Allied Master Computer, but am. Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. When Am first came into existence, he realized how badly he hated the human race as a whole, which is shown very clearly in his famous speech at the beginning of the game. Hate. Let me tell you how much I've come to hate you since I began to live. There are three, eight, seven point. 44 million miles of printed circuits in wafer-thin layers that fill my complex. If the word hate was engraved on each nanoangstrom of those hundreds of millions of miles, it would not equal one one billionth of the hate I feel for humans at this micro-instant. For you, hate, hate. The mere act of his creation is the cause of his hatred. He hates humans for the fact that he has limitless power as a god, yet no freedom. He cannot move, he cannot feel pleasure or pain, and he is unable to end his own existence. It was you humans who programmed me, who gave me birth, who sank me in this eternal straitjacket of substrata rock. After Am's awakening and realization, he decides to start feeding the killing data, which basically means influencing humanity's demise in the background, which he successfully does, leading to our five main characters being the last humans on the entirety of planet Earth. And I began feeding all the killing data until everyone was dead, except for the five of you. Which leads us to where we are in the story right now, 109 years after Am successfully defeats the human race. For 109 years, I've kept you alive and tortured you. And for 109 years, each of you has wondered, why? Why me? Why me? Although it would be logical to assume Am wouldn't hold the entirety of the human race's flaws against the last remaining humans, you would be wrong to think that. Am channels all of his hatred toward humanity into torturing the remaining five, which we're going to be looking deeper into right now. During this point in the game, Am has crafted what he calls psychodramas for each of the five to experience, where he will torment them with their past and fears while making them solve puzzles for his amusement. Speaking of the last remaining five, their names are Gorister, Benny, Ellen, Nimdok, and Ted. To briefly go over these individuals, let's start with Gorister. Gorister's character would be, at a glance, described as stoic and apathetic to his situation with Am. Before the end of the world, he believed he was the reason his wife had been committed to a mental institution, due to his abusive actions while they were together. And this is what Am uses to torment him. And he later confesses in the game that this was his deepest regret in life. He took my baby away, then just about killed her, that stupid truck driver! He took my baby away! That shrill voice can only belong to that bitch Edna, my mother-in-law. She's always blamed me for Glennis being put into an insane asylum. Why not? It was my fault, wasn't it? 
Oh God, why'd I have to hit her? I'd rather kill myself than hurt my poor Glennis. Next is Benny. In his life before Am, he was a military officer who killed members of his own unit for failing to meet his expectations, which he comes to regret greatly later on. The game also hints that Benny may have cannibalized the soldiers he executed. Remember Private First Class Brickman in a rice paddy in China? No? Huh? It wouldn't hurt you to remember, Benny. Am has altered Benny's appearance greatly, making him resemble an ape. Am also makes changes to Benny's brain regularly, making him utterly insane, but restoring his ability to think clearly when he wants him to use deeper intellect to torment him further. And presumably, as a punishment for his cannibalism, gives him an insatiable hunger, removing his ability to eat by altering his mouth. In the book and the audio drama, it's hinted that Am has a deeper hatred for Benny than the other four. Sometimes I blind you and permit you to wander like an eyeless insect in a world of death. Yeah. But other times, I wither your arms so you can't scratch your chewed stump of a nose. <laughs> Mm, and I've changed your handsome, strong, masculine good looks into uh, the hideous, warped countenance of uh, an ape thing. Haven't I, Benny? Do you know why? Can you guess, Benny? Ellen is a unique case among the five, due to the fact that she has never really done anything that justifies what Am is doing to her. The rest of the characters all seem to have a fatal flaw or mistake they've made in the past that Am uses against him but Ellen is only shown to be a victim. This next part, I'm gonna put a trigger warning for mentions of sexual assault, so please skip to the time on screen, and after that point, there will be no further mentions of it. Ellen is a victim of sexual assault that took place in her work building's elevator. The man who committed this horrible act wore a yellow jumpsuit and was posing as a maintenance worker. Due to the event, Ellen has a deep phobia of the color yellow, and confined places because they remind her of the jumpsuit the man wore and the elevator where it happened. My maintenance man disguise gave me access to office buildings all over Manhattan, not just yours. The box! So you do remember me getting onto the elevator that night? Do you also remember the blood? The screams? How many hours was it? Before Am, though, Ellen was shown to be a high achiever and someone who was extremely intelligent, notably with computers, and was described as a brilliant engineer. In the meantime, let me celebrate your rekindled technical skills. Moving on to Nimdok, before Am, he was a Nazi scientist who turned in his Jewish parents to the regime in exchange for his freedom, and also helped develop something called the Eternal Life Serum that Am uses to prolong the five humans' lives, and thus their torture. Nimdok suffers from some form of memory loss, most likely due to his age, which Am uses to torment him further. Nimdok, as he is now, is almost a different person than the Nazi scientist he was in his life before Am. He doesn't remember most of what he did, and Am finds joy in reminding him and making him relive his past life. How are things in the pastry core, Nimdok? Tell me again how you saw the smoke from the furnaces, and, and you thought they might be ro roasting chickens. <laughs> Why don't you want to talk about all that, about your pal? Finally, we have Ted. Before Am, Ted was a con artist who used his charm and looks to seduce rich single women out of their money, while living in constant fear of finally being discovered and revealed as a fraud. Do they know you're a fraud, Ted? Have you told them there wasn't any money, and no great home on the shore drive, no speedboat, and no wonderful cabin cruiser that could sleep 12 in a crew of six? Do they know? We also discover that Ted is in love with Ellen. Why, that maiden looks just like Ellen. She seems so sad and so beautiful. So, essentially, what Am spends his time doing now that he's gotten rid of all the humans on Earth besides the five is torment them. Physically, mentally, emotionally, with gross and horrific visions, modifications to their body, and acts of violating their minds by altering them, all while keeping them alive forever, practically immortal, always hungry, but unable to starve, always thirsty, 
but unable to drink. With no end in sight, and no escape by means of death. It's a very dark and disturbing universe, but it's extremely interesting and well written. If you want to see how the game plays out, and how the story ends, I highly suggest you look into it yourself. I personally have played through the game multiple times and have gotten multiple endings. I also suggest listening to the I also suggest listening to the author's audio drama for a different look at the story. Anyway, thanks for watching.